Hey, y'all, you know this, but December, it's a monumental month. What about the birthday boy? We go big for Jesus in the month of December. We don't just do birthday, we do birth month. I mean, kind of we do birth year for him, but really, we go big in December. And real quickly, in case you don't know, maybe you're newer to Champion Center or maybe you've been here for a while, uh, the weekend of the 23rd, 24th, that weekend ends up being really big for us this year because we roll from the weekend right into Christmas Eve, okay? That's where we do the candlelight services. It gets crazy. We light stuff on fire. It's awesome. But hey, what we like to say, uh, if you're a team member, which I know many of you are a part of the team, no matter what your rotation is, when you serve, we go all in on that weekend. It's all hands on deck. We have tons of guests and visitors. And as you guys know, everyone shows up for Christmas Eve. So uh, all, all, all we can do to play our part and to make sure we have the doors ready, all the teams going, because uh, it's going to be awesome. We have some really fun stuff in store this year for Christmas Eve. And I especially want to say this year we're doing something unique and special that we've never done. We've been talking about it for a few weeks, but in case you missed it or you haven't heard yet, we're doing something this year called Sabbath Weekend. It's the weekend after Christmas Eve where we're taking, we like won't be gathering physically at any of our locations. We're taking a Sabbath. We've never done that in the 33 years that we've had Champion Center. So this is a first for us. We're really excited. And we've created a really unique online experience for our entire church family for that weekend that you won't want to miss. Uh, but in light of that, in light of this Sabbath weekend, we feel like, especially because we have a weekend off, we can all go all in on the 23rd and 24th. Does that sound good? Yeah, okay, cool. So... I have the privilege, I have the opportunity to kick off a brand new series that our team has prepared. We've been praying about this, we've been believing for this, we've been preparing for this, and it's called Family Matters. Now when I say that, and I know this because some people have already said it to me, I bet you're thinking, is this about that 90s sitcom? Is this going to be about that? Well, how many of you guys remember this guy, Steve Urkel? Oh, come on. Did I do that? You guys remember that? All the millennials are like, what's happening? What? Who is this? Google him. Really popular guy named Steve Urkel. He was just, he's very fashion forward. He was way ahead of his time, like 25 years. He was a nerd then, but man, modern day hipster. Urkel knew what was going on. So really, there's no correlation other than the show was a family show called Family Matters. And that's the title of our series. That's about all the correlation we have for you. So just in case you thought that's what it was about. It's not. But hey, let's get spiritual real quick. Let's pray. And then we'll get into the word. Father, you are so good to us. And I pray, Lord, wherever we're coming from today, whatever our situation is, whether it's awesome, whether it's bleak, whether it's somewhere in between, Lord, I pray by your spirit, by your presence, you are lifting and encouraging. Hopefully already, God, people sense and feel how real you are. But Lord, I pray as we open up your word today, as we share together, as we talk together, I pray that you would speak the right encouragement, the right wisdom. God, you would encourage us to take action in our lives, not just to listen, but oh, Lord, to act on what we're hearing. And so God, I thank you for the opportunity. Thank you that we get to be here today. It is a privilege to be in your house, worshiping together. And Jesus, it's in your name that we pray. And everybody said, amen. Yes. Amen. Well, hey, the truth is, family, it really does matter. From the very beginning, family is the most important human influence in our lives. From the very first moment we're born, we actually depend, we all know this, we depend on our family for our very basic needs to protect us, to provide for us. Our families actually form the first relationships that we know in this world. It's the first role model that we look to, teaching us how, how do we interact, how do we experience this world around us that we live in. And as important as our physical families are, and they are important, as important as they are, our spiritual family is even more important 
because it lasts forever. Our spiritual family is going to last and will last forever. Don't, don't misunderstand me, don't get me wrong. I know that our families here on earth, our physical families, they are meant to be a blessing to us. And hopefully, in most cases, they can be a wonderful gift from God. And I know that's not everyone's experience thus far. Maybe today, God wants to start a new legacy in your heart. Maybe you're the one in your family that's going to create the kind of physical family that God intends for all of us to live in and be a part of. But here's the deal. Our families on earth, as good as they may be, maybe you come from a really good family and as good or whatever scenario you find yourself in your physical family, they are temporary. Even the best of families eventually end up separated. We all die. We all pass from this earth. We're all going to age out at some point. And whether through death or whether tragic circumstances in life. I know many people have had to battle through and unfortunate divorces and things that tear families apart. Things that are horrific to go through. And you might have been a kid and you had to experience that. Or maybe you were a couple that went through that. Or you're an individual who's gone through just terrible stuff. Our physical families, they are temporary. So this dynamic that God wants to help us understand is that our spiritual family is something that lasts forever. Our relationship with other believers, this is what we take into eternity. These dynamics that we're working in right now, we're a part of this weekend. When you're in your life group, when you're serving on team, when you're joining together in community with God's family, this is what will last forever. And in many cases, I've found this. If you haven't experienced this yet, I encourage you to press in further to your spiritual family because in many cases, the bond and the strength and the unity you have with your spiritual family can be far greater than what you have with your physical family. And hopefully you're fortunate enough in time that your physical family is a part of your spiritual family, which has this exponential bond that's created with your physical and spiritual family. So here, look what scripture says. We got Hebrews 2.10, it's gonna be up on the screen. It says, God is the one who made all things, and all things are for his glory, because he wanted to have many children to share in this glory. The reality is, God wanted a family and he created you and I to be a part of that family. That's why we're here. We're here for his pleasure. We're here because he wants an awesome family. Not a group of robots, but people that choose. God, I wanna be a part of what you're doing. In Romans 12, five, check it out. Christ makes us one body and individuals who are connected to each other. The Bible uses descriptive language like we're put together, that we're joined, we're joined together, we're members together, and we're heirs together, meaning we have an inheritance. As a part of this family, there's an inheritance. You might not even know that, that you have an inher a rich, massive, mind-blowing inheritance that we're a part of in this family. But the deal is, when you become part of God's family, we are, you are, not your own anymore. While our relationship with Jesus, we all know this, it is personal, it's meant to be, and if you don't know that yet, we're gonna give you an opportunity this weekend to come to know what it is to have a personal relationship with Jesus. But once we start with that personal relationship with him, it's not meant to stay there. It's meant to be shared with other people. That's God's design in his spiritual family, that we belong together for eternity. God sees you, if you don't know this, he sees you already as his son and daughter. The challenge that we all have to fight through is the, the battles of the mind that disqualify us from who we are, the inheritance that we're born into. 
the righteousness of God that is ours through Jesus. Don't discount yourself. The main thought that I want you to walk away with this weekend, if, if you have nothing else, I want you to take this away. That you are, that we are, formed for God's family. Which means you are loved. It means you are wanted. And it means you belong. You are loved, you are wanted, and you belong. So don't exclude yourself from the very thing God is including you to be a part of. That is the biggest battle. We exclude ourselves. Sometimes you'll hear people say, I wasn't accepted, I didn't fit in. And in some cases, that's probably true. But more often than not, we're the ones that create that own cycle in our mind that I don't fit, they don't like me. That's something we're telling ourselves. God doesn't love me. I want you to know today, I'm here, I'm sent today by God to let all of us know, you are formed for his family. You are already loved, you are already wanted, and you already belong. But there's a part that we play in that. We actually have to choose to accept that love, to accept being wanted, to accept belonging. So we're gonna break it down real quick, and I just encourage everyone, take notes, write something down. You're gonna remember it much longer if you write stuff down. That's why your teacher tells you that in college. It's no different in church, it's no different in your family. When your wife's talking to you, you better write something down. How about, I'm gonna minister to all the husbands. Hey, shame off you, sir. If you forgot the last thing your wife told you, the last 27 things she told you, you're in good company. This is just a side note, but I've told my wife, babe, if I'm like texting or doing something else, can you wait till I make eye contact with you before you start telling me things I need to do because it's not, I'm not registering yet. So it's this, can you just work on the communication? Okay, just work on it. Take notes, write something down. Okay, I don't know how we got there. You, you were formed for God's family, which means you are loved. First John 3. See what great love the Father has lavished on us, that we should be called children of God. And that is what we are. The writer is like emphasizing that. And that is what we are. We're his children because of this great love that he lavishes on us. Now, in order for us to grasp this word love, in our English language, we don't always do it justice because we use one word to describe four different types of love. And there's four basic loves. If you've not heard this before, it'll be new for some of you, it'll be repeat for some of you, a good reminder. But there's four types of love the Bible talks about. Eros love, which is, that's the romantic love. That's that between a husband and a wife. That's good love. That's not the love we're talking about right here. Then there's storge love. It's this other type of love that's that family bond between a brother, a physical brother and sister, your mom and dad. It's that family bond, this love that's described in a family unit. Then you have the philia or philia love. And that's the love we have for one another is humankind, decency to one another, respect for human life, value for people. And then there's this love that's so overwhelming and so mind-blowing. And in this passage of scripture, it's talking about agape love. This is a love that it has a relentless pursuit after us. It's an unyielding love. It's a love that's so strong, unconditional, shown by the love of God through Jesus Christ. This extravagant love. There's a story in the Bible that paints just an amazing picture of this extravagant love that God has for you and I. And I wanna share this story because I want you to pull this story in as your own. I want you to see yourself in this story as it relates to our Heavenly Father. And it's the story of the prodigal son. Jesus shares this story wanting to illustrate to us how much he actually loves us and the distance that he goes to show us love. The story of the prodigal son, as some of you will remember, may be new for others. 
There's a young son, part of a family. There's a family business. The son gets to a certain age and he basically says, hey dad, I'm ready for my inheritance. I wanna do my own thing now. I know, I know better. Of course, against the good wishes of his father, he pursues this and the dad says, okay son, here's your inheritance, go. It's not what the father intended for him at the time, but the son takes off, takes his inheritance. He ends up living this lavish, over-the-top life, doing everything he wanted to do, living without restraint. He ends up blowing his entire inheritance. So here's this young son against the good wishes of his father, blows everything he has. It gets so bad, he ends up to where he's without food, he's without money, and he's at one day he ends up waking up, he's in a pig pen, a literal pig pen, eating where the pigs eat. Finally he wakes up and he's like, man, if I go back to my dad's house, at least, at very least, I'm gonna have a good warm meal. I could be one of his servants, I could work for him, I could be one of the, you know, the workers out in the fields. At least I could do that. So the son heads home. And this is where the story of the father kicks in. He sees his son far off in a distance. They didn't have cars back then, so you kind of knew someone was coming down your road, you knew. Like someone was saying, hey! The father sees him off in a far distance. And he doesn't wait there and be like, yeah, punk, you better get home. That blew all my money. What does he do? The father runs after his son. This is God's heart. He runs, relentless, and he takes it. He doesn't just run after him. He takes a robe and a ring. You're my son. That's how much he loves us, no matter what we've done. He runs to his son and he wraps him up in the family robe. And he said, you're mine. That's our inheritance. That's how much God loves us. Don't disqualify yourself from something God is including you in. The only one holding you back is not God. I'll tell you that much, it's not him. We reject this love, this extravagant agape love that God's bringing to all of us. So don't count yourself out of what God's including you in. Sound good? All right. Well, you were formed for God's family, which means you're loved, and it means you are wanted. Look what Ephesians says. It says, God decided in advance to adopt us into his own family by bringing us to himself through Jesus Christ. This is what he wanted to do, and it gave him great pleasure. There's a movie out right now it's called Instant Family. My wife and I went to see it. And quick disclaimer. If you're thinking about taking your children, make sure you like check the reviews and everything. It's a little bit, language is a little over the top. There's some descriptive things, but honestly, it's nothing outside. If you're in public school, it's no harder than what's going on there. So if you're in Christian school, you might want to check, check the ratings, okay? But the story, the message of Instant Family is beautiful. And we were thinking about this point, we were praying about this point, I thought, what better way than the message that this movie brings to display this idea of how much we're wanted. The story takes place, it's about many children, and we, we know this, there's many children across our country and around the world who've either been abandoned by their parents, either on purpose, by accident, by death in a family. For a variety of reasons, children end up in the foster care system. Unfortunate, it's horrible, it's tough. And this beautiful family decides to take on a challenge, and challenge it was. It takes place, they adopt this young teenage girl, her name is Lizzie in the movie, and she has two younger siblings, so it's three kids they come to their family. They have no kids prior to this. And they start on this journey of bringing this family in. And as you can imagine, when you're Lizzie, when you're growing up like this and you've been in and out of homes, feeling abandoned by your parents and the people that are supposed to love you, 
You can imagine the kind of filter that she lives with. Like, ah, yeah, I've done this before, just the next family. Rightfully so, like, we understand that, right? Like, you, it's sensible to feel like that when you've been treated like that. And yet what we see in this couple is an unrelenting desire. They kept sending Lizzie a signal, we want you. There is nothing you're going to say about us. You, no matter if you lie about us, no matter what you say, we want you. We chose you. That's our, our God is saying the same thing to us. No matter what you think you've done, no matter if you feel like you're unlovable, no matter if you feel like you're unwantable, he wants you, he wants us. As far as he's concerned, as far as Champion Center is concerned, you are wanted. You know, this story, it's common to all of us because Lizzie continues to reject until finally something clicks in her. After months and months and months in the relentless pursuit of her new parents. And that, I'm praying by God's spirit today that that would click in all of our hearts. We have different filters. We have different things that we're fighting through that tell us you are not wanted. You are not loved. That's the filter that we're fighting through. Even as I talk right now, you're fighting me. You're fighting the words that I'm trying to speak life into you. We have to realize, just like Lizzie did, there's a point when you can settle and say, you know what, I may have been abandoned by other people, and some people definitely have done me wrong. I don't feel like I fit in, but you know what? I want to let you know there's a group of people here. It's called the family of God. That if you'll let them, they will show you the kind of love and the kind of acceptance that you've always dreamed of. You got to let the guard down. You got to let people in one more time. Just watch what God will do. Just watch what his family will do. That's the tough part about life because following Jesus would be easy if all we had to do was just believe in him. But the deal is we got to work with each other. And people, it's not always easy. You know that from your own family unit. It's not easy in your own family unit, let alone hundreds of other people or thousands of other people you're trying to do life with. You know, we're formed for God's family, which means we're loved, it means we're wanted, and lastly, it means that you belong. If we look in Romans 12, it's up on the screen, starting in verse four. It says, for just as each of us has one body, with many members, meaning arms, legs, ears, all the stuff. And these members do not all have the same function. So in Christ, though many, form one body, and each member belongs to all the others. So this passage of scripture is using like, imagine your own body, you have an arm, you have a leg, we have all the internal parts, right? And all these parts, they have meaning because they're connected to each other. You take an arm off, that's a pretty useless arm. If it's not connected to the lifeblood of the body, no value. There's this descriptive picture. So following Christ, it's not just about believing in him. We start with that. But it's also about belonging. Following Jesus is not just about believing, but it's also about belonging. We are members of this massive body. When the Bible uses that word member, oftentimes you hear the word member, think more of like a part. But the word member, you think about like, like a club membership? Like what are we talking, a gym membership? Is that the kind of member I am? No, it's way beyond that. Now there are massive benefits. There is a great inheritance that you don't want to miss out on. But a member, think of it like an integral part of a complex structure. Like our body parts. A thumb is this massively integral part of a very complex organism that makes up our body. And this picture that God's painting as his family is that each and every single one of us are this integral piece. You don't really notice your pinky until the thing's like bruised. Maybe you sprain the thing and then you're like, oh my God, my pinky. That thing is amazing. Sometimes we feel like a pinky finger in God's family. Like, does anyone notice? What good is it? I can grab a cup without a pinky. 
Every piece has its value, it has its part. The same is true for you and I. You have an integral part. Maybe you are an artery to the body. Maybe you're supposed to provide blood flow to other members. And if you're not in your place, if you're not doing your job, if you're not giving out the value that God intended you to give out to encourage other people, there's things you've been through that God intends each and every one of us, the stuff we've gone through is to encourage other members. It's to give life, it's to help heal. What does the body do? It heals itself, right? So all the parts, all the members are designed to heal each other. They're designed to play their role, to encourage one another. You know, the Bible says it like this, is that each part actually gets its meaning from the body, not the other way around. The part doesn't get meaning from itself. The part gets meaning from the body. You and I, we get our meaning when we're connected to our spiritual family. That real purpose starts to sink in and click. That value add, that passion, that desire, everything God designed is found in his family. We recently had a, a lady come to Growth Track and she was just kind of telling us, you know, it's been four years I've been here and I'm finally deciding to like move forward in my church family. She found her fit. She came to Growth Track, just real practical. Growth Track, you know, it's just real practical. Found her fit and has just come to life. It's like going from black and white TV to like HD or 4K. It's like, I was living in black and white and I didn't realize there was 4K in three dimensions. This is incredible. And that's what it's like when you discover your fit and your place and you plug in and you're like, man, I'm not perfect, but I'm a functioning part of the body now. And what I'm not saying is that you have to be a perfect part before you can play your part. Sometimes when you join God's family, there's other parts that are going to help heal you first. And then you're going to get healed. And then pretty soon you're going to be able to play your part of helping others heal in their part. This is how the body of Christ works. This is how God's family is designed. But in order to belong, there's a couple things that got to happen. There's got to be an open invitation. And I'm here to say again, as far as God's concerned, as far as Jesus is concerned, as far as Champion Center is concerned, you belong. The question becomes, will you accept the love? Will you accept and know that you're wanted? Will you accept the fact that you do belong? Because you have to choose to belong. No one can do that for you. So I wanna to appeal to those of you that maybe you've been hesitant, maybe you've been in the bleachers of the family, so to speak. Maybe you're brand new to Champion Center or church life altogether. You're just trying to figure this thing out. I just want you to know you're formed for family. You're meant for this. Maybe you've been here for a while and you're just disconnected, disjointed from the body. I wanna tell you, doesn't mean it's easy, but the toxicity, battle through the toxicity, battle through the pain, battle through past hurts. On the other side of that, you're gonna find this purpose and this life and this meaning. God is calling all of us. He's saying, hey, take a risk. Being a part of the family is risky. It's a risky business. It's risky loving people. Because when you put your heart out there, it can get broken and it probably will. I can say this. I come from what I would consider a decently healthy family, not perfect. But even when you have a good physical family, your heart still gets broken in life. There are still challenges and obstacles and mountains that we face. So no matter what spectrum you're from, a, a healthy physical family doesn't heal all wrongs. Life is still painful, it's still challenging. But you know what, what, do, what, what does a good parent say? Get out there and go again. Yeah, you might have got bruised, you might have got hurt. They probably broke your heart. Get up and go again. Because there's plenty of people out there, if you'll let them, that want to love you. They want to show you love. There's God's family that wants to wrap its arms around you and show you the kind of love that you've never experienced. So regardless of where you are, God wants you to know you are formed for his family, which means you are loved. It means you are wanted. It means you belong. Do not exclude yourself from something that God is including you into. Thanks so much for joining us online. Here's what we would love for you to do. Click on the logo on your screen to subscribe to our YouTube channel. 
Every week we're uploading our messages, bonus content, and even some videos that are guaranteed to make you laugh. We hope you have a great week and we'll see you next time.